Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 17 of Chemically Bonded. I, th I think it's 17. Uh, oh my gosh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yes, it is 17. I was, I was correct. Last time, we made plans with these two gals after we had lunch together. It was kind of awkward, but we made plans like extracurricular plans like hey let's hang out outside of school and things have been progressing pretty nicely so I feel like these milkers get bigger every time I come to this home screen anyway I I'm, I'm rambling at this point let's just get on with the show all right everyone everyone good everyone ready got your snacks maybe your your beverage of choice a juice maybe I don't know but anyway we're about to get started the tranquil chime of the bell marking the end of class, yet again, the typical fervor ensues and the bubbly brunette at the front of the class peering backwards. Like a chaotic reaction shooting out of a test tube, her energy doesn't cease to amaze me. Are you going to just sit there? Shouting through the class, enough to turn a few heads, it's clear that she's become a bit too chaotic. Calm down. Take it easy. If you want me to go with you to the nurse's office, I will. But there's nothing wrong with me. A few giggles shimmering through the rest of the crowd's idols, idle gossips. I stand from my chair and make my way to her desk. The pout perched on her face quickly changing into the classical smile that's come to warm my heart. Shouldn't we get going? She's probably waiting for us. You're right. Uh, let's check this out in the encyclopedia. Uh, well, we'll read this first. Despite us being friends, I'd still rather not face the wrath of angry Naomi. The thought of buying an abdo guard has passed through my mind more than once. I'm assuming that's uh, a guard for your abdominal region to block punches, is what I'm going to assume. How many more do we have? One, two, three. Three more things in the encyclopedia to collect. An abdominal guard, short form abdo guard, is an item of sporting gear worn to protect the sexual area. Oh. Interesting. You know because Naomi might kick you there, right? Abdo guards are commonly worn in cricket, hockey, or any other sport with a high risk of crotch impact. You know, I haven't, I've never had a crotch impact that I can be proud of, unfortunately. Anyway, let's go on. So let's go! Rising from her chair, following in my footsteps, I quickly find myself joined by Kyoko. Moving down the corridor at a pace between haste and trying to still seem like normal people to any onlooker. But who can blame us? Both of us looking forward to reigniting their friendship. Their hearts brighter than any star in the night sky. If I had knew fixing their friendship would be this easy, I would have told Kyoko what Naomi's feelings were long ago. That's the wrong new, by the way. But there wouldn't be any fun in that. Over the past few weeks, my own friendships I've developed with these two girls has certainly become meaningful. I can't imagine a typical high school life without them. Transition. Stepping into the naturally lit candescence of the school gym, our footsteps echo quickly percussion to the syllable slam of the door behind us. That sentence was far too intellectual. The tunes of the world playing as the sights are surround us. Standard images of training club members, sports bags tossed haphazardly, and the sprinkling of dust entrapped in sun rays all topped off with the, small, with the smell of sweat as the flag hangs proudly above. The sense of sporting pride being a hard-pressed thing to avoid. Sneaking a peek towards Kyoko, the sense of fright stands crisp on her face. A quick look now becoming a concerned stare as she notices my gaze from the corner of her eye, her cheeks quickly glowing red in response, a pair of roses. My look? You're the one who looks like you've just wet yourself. Is something wrong? You didn't actually di- No. It's d dust. You know. I used to come 
here. Some of these people, they'll notice me. A sullen look on her face, her own feelings of hesitance crossed the bridge between us, rising up the urge to make her smile once again, to be there for her. It'll be okay. Naomi's here, right? She wouldn't let anyone put pressure on you. I'll be fine. It should be okay. I want to see her. Determination flowing through her voice, Kyoko takes a step ahead of me, continuing our walk towards the pack of students huddled to the side of the track. Her hair still flowing graciously down her back as I trail behind her, a river of chocolate meandering down her athletic figure. The sight... The sight her of... That doesn't make sense. Um, the sight of her newfound resolve, beautiful under the ambient sunlight. What's she doing over there? Uh, she's looking for you. Wait. Ugh. Kyoko! Watching Kyoko turn in her space, her hair twirling in the air around her as her face lights up in shock, I could swear I heard an eh from the distance. Perhaps shouting her name wasn't such a great idea. As Kyoko runs back towards us, the eyes of the hall shift away from their own activities and towards the three of us. The two girls in the limelight, and some unknown guy besides them. But why are you over he here? I was getting changed. Now foregoing her sweater, either trying to cool off or a half-assed attempt at getting dressed, Naomi stands with her eyes averted away. Hair hanging gently beside her ears, glints of sweat gracing the crimson of her cheeks. The sight before me is nothing but beautiful. Her lip quivering as she bites against it gently, anticipating Kyoko's response. Pouting, Naomi turns towards me sharply, her puffy cheeks quickly shifting into a look of annoyance as she wipes the sweat off her brow. A moment's hesitance as we stare towards one another, a brief moment to catch the look of resolve in the gems of her eyes, Lapis Lazuli. Get her to talk to me. Kyoko, talk to her. Uh, we should probably get going to the station. Y you're right. A layer of ice still between them, yet the warm look of nervousness coating their faces doesn't make a dent to melt it. The reddish blush mutually between them as their eyes shy away from one another, falling to the floor as we begin tracing our way out of the gym. Steps still to take to restore the bond between them, yet the path seemingly short as the cool spring wind greets us. Stepping stones forward as the two girls still move forward, their hearts resolve to make things right again. Man, I'm really enjoying this game and it's coming to a close. So, I mean, you know, you can't be a SpongeBob and go on forever or a Simpsons. Like, you have to know when to end it. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sad, but at the same time, like, we're going to get a nice resolution, I'm sure. Positive. Ah, that was good water. Rocking across the rails, the train carriage slowly shakes side to side, the clanking of the wheels across the bare metal of the track below screaming out amidst the idle sound around us. Conversation of commuters calling out, taking up the space in the silence between the three of us. Kyoko on one side, Naomi on the other, the three of us squeezed into the crampid carriage. A dream for most guys, sandwiched between two cute girls, let alone having Naomi's neck brushing up against my shoulder. Now that, now that I'm actually in this situation, it's not at all as great as I'd imagined. Not so long ago, she'd quip at the thought of sitting next to me, that she didn't want to be seen with me, or that we look too close. Now, if anything, she's leaning against my shoulder, fidgeting with her fingers nervously as the silence between the three of us continues to prolong. 
veering her eyes away from our direction as if to avoid eye contact with either of us. It's a cute sight, her hair flowing gently against her blossom cheeks, her timid nature stripping away all the prior brashness. She really does have a girlish side. Do you have any idea what we're going to do when we get there? Suddenly speaking out, her words startle me out of my trance as I continue peering towards her, my own reaction chained to hers as she jumps back in fright. Uh. I'm turn down the music just slightly. Just, 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 just that's, that's, that's good. Uh, n no, I don't. I uh, asked him earlier. He doesn't have any sense of organization. Turning towards Kyoko, yet another rather than faced, I speak out towards her. Wh what did you have in mind, then? I... I d don't mind. I'm just ha happy to be here. Her eyes now on Naomi, the tension between them grows as the first sparks of conversation slowly warms the frost between them. Uh, me too. And it all ends so suddenly. Still! You should have thought of something. Tch, idiot. Why is it my fault? Don't you two remember what you used to do together? He really is an idiot. <laughs> Alright, I don't like the gang up on our copy party going on right here. Joined in their passion of grilling me, their laughter echoes out around us, a force against the urban symphony as the train slowly screeches to a stop. The two of them joining as we heed, head to leave the train. Ugh. Really though, what are we going to do? Now standing in what is, for all intents and purposes, the middle of nowhere, a slight breeze brushes past us, Gently rocks Naomi's hair as each strand shimmers under the light. Kyoko, still looking downwards, unfazed as she twirls her own in her fingers. Let's go to the cafe. There? Again? Can't you be a little more creative? Or fork out some money to take us somewhere better? I wonder if that's a joke, because like, there's only so many background scenes used in this game, so I wonder if it's like... Oh, we could only afford the cafe and nothing else. Do you really expect me to pay for you? What do you think this is? A date? N no. <sighs> she she's right though. We always go to the cafe. It's not like there's anywhere else. Mm, fine. If I'm good at athletics and she's good at science, is being a dork your specialty? <laughs> Hey, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. Uh, no, uh, I was joking. Let's just go to the cafe. Man, uh, the steam sale was is is happening right now. The summer steam sale, see Se summer steam sale. Uh, try saying that eighty times fast if you're not retarded. Anyway, uh. This game was like, I think it was like five dollars, and I bought it for like seven forty-three. So I, I'm mad at those two dollars and forty-three cents that I could have saved. Still, I'm glad the money can go to my favorite uh, visual no novel creator, uh, DS Sands. I think that's his name, their name, the company name. I don't know. If you're watching this, dude, just give me the beta test for your your next project. I would love to uh, dive deep in there. Despite the suggestion being made on the fly, what with the cafe seeming like a second home now, the two girls take a place next to each other at a nearby sofa. Naomi's meek attempt at getting closer to Kyoko quickly shot down by a shy expression across the timid scientist's face. Seeing them so awkward is beyond adorable. Uh, ew! Y yeah Ew! What? Where do you want me to look? I don't know. Just play with your phone or something. I don't know. Just... Sorry, I hit the scroll wheel there. 
And what are you two going to do? Um... We'll, we'll figure something out. Th that's what science is about. Really? Sitting there idly, no response in sight, the two girls sheepishly divert their eyes, our orders quickly coming in the midst of their bashfulness. Two coffees and a juice. I'm guessing this is mine then? Hey! <laughs> Laughing aloud, a smile quickly creeps upon Naomi's face, soon after followed by Kyoko's. Both tranced in happiness as time continues to flow onward, memories of their past now becoming the status quo once again, friends reunited. Dang, transition galore out here. Are we really just going to stay here and drink coffee? That seems a little anticlimactic. What do you mean? <sighs> she, she means we didn't come all this way just to sit down and talk. Aren't we supposed to be having fun? This is fun, right? Let's go to the arcade. Taking the decision in her own hands, Naomi smiles cheekily towards me, a total rejection of my plans. Yet, by the look on Kyoko's face, I couldn't say anyone has any complaints. That... sounds fun! In the end, as long as they're together, perhaps they'd be happy with doing anything. This really is transition galore. A new background? Whoa. Looks like the chemically bonded neon sign over here. Pretty epic. Got some some uh, arcade machines, claw machine, air hockey table. Dude, they, man, they put a lot of effort in here. Appreciate it. Greeted by the roaring sound of game machines, funky music, and enthusiastic shouts as city goers indulge in the atmosphere around us, the three of us find ourselves in a nearby arcade. The two girls lost in awe as they gaze around, wondering what to do as the flashy lights glitter in their eyes, a world of color open before them. So... So? This is a place to have fun! Look! In her usual bout of enthusiasm, Kyoko points her, arms, her arm out towards a nearby air hockey table, aglow with a neon blue trim as it flashes brightly in the distance. The scoreboard above almost begging us to play as the digits remain fixed in the otherwise active world surrounding it. It's not the sort of thing I would have expected her to enjoy, but then again, she's always been full of surprises. You do know only two of us can play, right? Why don't you two face each other? <laughs> I have a better idea. You versus us. But isn't that a little unfair? Staring towards me smugly, the flashing lights around us glistening in her eyes, the air of competition surrounds her. Well, it'd be rude to leave you out. Come on, it'll be fun. Are you afraid of getting your ass whooped by two girls? I need it. Yes. Come on! This way we can all have fun! Whether it'd be fun is another question, but at the end of the day, having them on the same team isn't a bad idea. To continue throwing logs on the fire that is their refound friendship, building up a sense of companionship can only be for the better. That and I'm quite good at air hockey too. There's a fun, there's fun in a challenge. Man, they should have put a mini game in here. That would have been epic. I know I don't use that word a lot, but it, it truly would be. With the small plastic puck sliding violently across the table, the scoreboard continues to flash in their favor as the gap between us grows ever so steeply. Each blink of the light just another stab into my prior confidence. It's safe to say I was being cocky. The smiles on their face begin... The smile on their faces beaming with prowess as the timer continues as the timer counts down to my inevitable demise. There! We won! High five! 
their hands joining in unison. Smiles bloom upon their faces before quickly shifting to embarrassment as their eyes connect. Their quick moments of embrace over ever so fast. Still, it's nice to see. You don't have to rub it in. Of course we do. You'll get used to it. We make a great team. We really do. Seemingly enough, their past lives faded behind them as a new future awaits, their smiles glowing brighter than the flashing lights around them. Images of their happiness flash before me as they stand across the table, still relishing in the bliss of, the, of their win. Peering at the time on my phone, it's clear enough that we've been out for a while. Time really does fly when you're having fun. We should probably head home. It'll get dark soon. Why does that matter? Wouldn't your parents get worried about you? M my parents? He's right. I can't miss dinner. Hmm. Naomi seemed kind of, uh, surprised. Or, uh, like, she's like, my parents? I wonder if that's going to be the, what this arc of Act 3 surrounds us with. Interesting. That's my hunch. We'll see. Taking Naomi's hands, taking Naomi's hand, Kyoko skips forward to join me by my side. The three of us ready to put an end to what has been an, an enjoyable experience for all of us. Let's go. Basking in the evening sunlight, piercing the train windows, the usual commotion fills the atmosphere as Kyoko and Naomi remain relaxed at my side. Oh, Naomi has some tears in her eyes. What's going on here, man? The two of them, now together, stuck in a moment of silence as they both peer off in different directions. As her eyes wander around, Naomi's meet mine, a glimpse of sadness within them before her expression shifts to shock. Uh, uh? Are you alright? You sure? <sighs> Kyoko, I have something I need to tell you. <clears throat> Startled by Naomi's voice, Kyoko breaks away from her trance and peers towards us, embarrassment coating her cheeks with a crimson allure. Here we go. I... I'm sorry. Sadness overwhelms Naomi as her eyes begin to glint under the dimming evening light. Her brow now furrowed, the happiness she'd previously exhibited throughout the day is nowhere to be seen. For... for... for what? D don't pretend like you don't know. I'm sorry for not being there for you. I'm sorry for not trying harder to be your friend again. Today made me realize what I'd missed. How much I enjoy spending time with you. So, I'm sorry. Turning my head to Kyoko, silence spans the space surrounding us before the sound of sniffles breaks the tension between us. A look of confusion quickly becoming engulfed in sorrow as tears stream down her pink cheeks. It's... really... okay. I... enjoy spending time with you two. Today ha has been fun. Watching the two of them like this, I can't help but feel a little emotional too. The bonds between their hearts, too strong to have ever been broken. Even after all this time, they're still friends. I am... I'm sorry, too, for not understanding. It's... okay, really. It's my fault. With a smile, Naomi stands from her seat, albeit knocked off balance slightly by the rocking of the carriage. Kyoko follows suit, the two of them staring blankly towards one another. 
before joining in an embrace, their hearts finally at ease. Watching on in silence the two girls before me, I'd be lying if I didn't admit I've taken a liking to them, that I consider them part of my school life. It's strange to think that not so long ago, I was a complete stranger to the two of them, a classmate, just another guy. Now, I'm privy to the emotional reunion of their hearts, the reaffirmation of their friendship. It's nice. Kyoko, Naomi, together in their reignited friendship. And me, the retard. Three of us heading back home under the blissful evening sunlight. Sunlight, it's an image I cherish. As much as I don't want to break up your special moment, it's our stop. This is the, the transition-packed episode, man. Ah, refreshing. If you ask me, it's uh, Monday at 11.45. Man, I, should I end the episode here? I don't know, man. Um, Dude, I mean, it seems like a good stopping point. It's kind of short, but still. Yeah, we'll, we'll end it. We'll end it. Yeah, I just want to stretch out this series. I love it so gosh darn much. Anyway, thank you for watching. Go ahead, do me four favors. Uh, first of all, please like. Uh, second, go ahead, comment. And third of all, uh, if you could subscribe, that would be pretty epic. And uh, for the last favor, number four, uh, it's a big one. Uh, as always, help me find a girlfriend. <gasps> and bye bye